Hi everyone, we are going to see how to set up Red Hat 7. Okay, and once we boot from the media, this is the default menu we will get. The, by default, it will the, uh, the test this media will be highlighted. For, so for the installation, we want to choose the first option, Install Red Hat Linux Enterprise Linux 7.1. We can see other options later. Now the media get loaded. The files are loading from the media to launch the Anaconda installer. The Anaconda is the default installer for every operating systems. What are the distributions? Linux distributions. These files are loading from the media right now. So we are going to perform a full mode installation using the graphical interface. This is a GUI installation and this installation steps are similar to 6 Red Hat Linux 6 setup. If you have already watched my videos regarding how to set up a Red Hat Linux 6, this is the same as but uh, only two steps will be different from 6.x series. You can see that the Anaconda is loading the files. Mm -hmm. The logs will be find, found under slash temp once the installation has been completed. Here we go. We got the language system wide language. So I'm going to choose the English. By default, the English will be chosen already. But we just we want to proceed by clicking the next option the system wide language was, was being choosed here I'm going to change the time zone as per the my location you want to choose the time zone as per where you are the current location all right I have choose my current location here once choose you can see the time NTP server time if I am connected to any one of the network time uh, time server or something we can proceed by giving the time server host name but we can see it later I'm going to set up a time zone time server later I'll um, explain how to set up your time server by next we are going to see what kind of server we can build it's a minimal option infrastructure server file and print server basic web server and virtualization host and server with GUI uh, many options there and if we want to build a DNS server I want to choose infrastructure server and I want to choose the option DNS server from the right side and if I want to build a only FTP or Samba server file sharing server I want to choose the file and print server and choose the right side FTP and SMB so here we are going to perform a basic web server installation I will choose the basic web server installation by default the software installation source will be selected by media if I have a FTP installation or something or I want to choose the other option so let me see that later this is the disk where I am going to install so already the disk was chosen clicked and I am going to configure my own partition structure um, here I want to define the partitions what are the partitions I want to get installed so I need a boot partition mainly so I am going to choose boot just I am giving 500 MB all other partition will be undergoing to logical volume LVM so if I need space more space in any one of the partition I can extend the size of the partition later so I'm going to use LVM as my concept here so I'm giving 15 GB for my root partition It will be a little slow because I am using a test machine. So we can see the device type is LVM. Mm -hmm. 
I'm defining the home partition to 2 GB. Even 500 MB is enough for my demonstration purpose, but still we can, we are going to perform some of the other tasks. So let me define the 2 GB. You can see the mount point and the device which, which disk is defined and the water size was I defined and the device type will be M and the volume group. Everything we can see there. I can modify the volume group also by clicking the modify button and giving a name. Here we, we can see that rel. I am removing it and I am giving a name as EX300. We are preparing for the exam. EX300, so I am giving the name EX300 for the, my volume group for the file system. Here we can see EX4, EX3, EX2, XFS, and VFS. Yes. So by default, the 7 will be, RL7 will come with the XFS. So I am using the same file system. Here also we can see the boot position, its device type or standard position, not a logical volume. Logical volume in the boot position cannot begin logical volume, so I am using a standard position. All other position will be undergoing in logical volume. So I am defining the swap. Swap also can be in a logical volume. So if I need to extend the swap size, I can extend it later. I am giving 5 MB of swap for my demonstration purpose. Where so I'm going to define the where partition. The where for partition will be in two gig size. Here we are going to use a standard layout of the partition according to the security policy. So I need to define the where, where log, and where log audit. Each and every partitions, each and every mount points, I am providing 2 GB. I have given the where, where log and where log audit. I am going to give a separate mount as where log audit. So the audit log should be stored here. This is the standard policy, uh, standard layout of a partition defining for a security audit purpose. So it is recommended by the security rule, some of the rules, and we can ignore two failed check if we define the separate partitions. I'm going to define a temp partition with two gig. Most of the application want more space in the term, so we want to aware about that. So for that for the software installation, I'm providing op with two gig. If I'm going to install any Java package or any you know the authentication that for the authentication utilities, it will be installed on the op. So all the positions are defined home. Where log audit, where log opt, where term boot, root swap. All right, I'm going to proceed done. Here we can see those uh, partitions which I have defined, and it will write the changes to the partitions. It will create a logical volume with the XFS file system. You can see every changes here. What are the changes I have done? All right. I'm going to click accept changes. If we want to make the changes, we can cancel and return to the custom partition. So I have finalized the changes. Now I am going to connect to a network. Here I am using DHCP from the virtual box, my virtual machine. So I am just I want to on the interfaces. There are two NIC. The NIC ENP0S8 used to communicate between two virtual machines inside the virtual box environment. I'll show how to set up the, those things for practicing. 
I am done with this. All right, the KW is enabled by default. KW is useful to check the crash. If the system is getting crashed, you can analyze it very easily using the KW. All right, here the user settings. Now the installation was begin. See, we can see that uh, creating XFS file system on the SDA1 partition. I'm setting the root password as red hat at the rate one two three. This is very weak password and it's not recommend in any way, any circumstance. It's not recommend. We need to use a undictionary word and very strong password. So never use it. I have set a root password. Now we can create a normal user or with administrator privileged user here. I am creating a user name as sysadmin. He have the privilege with root. So once I choose make this user as administrator, he will be provided with the root. The same password I am using right at the rate one two three. The password is just for a test. Never use this dictionary word password. It can be cracked very easily. All right, we need to wait for some minute. Starting the package installation process. It will take too much time for me. Uh, but in the real environment, the base machines, a physical machines. If I am performing the same installation in the physical machine, it will not take too much time. It, it can be few minutes, five to ten minutes or something. So we, I am going to fast forward the video. The video was fast forwarder now. It took almost 30 minutes to complete my installation. But here I am fast forwarding it. Only few packages are left. Around 100 and something. Once the installation was completed we can see that performing it's performing the post installation setup task it will write the grub and it will write the init ram file system everything it will be written at the end of the installation and it will ask for the reboot once those steps are done now it's generating the init ram efforts once the init ram efforts was completed it will ask for the reboot So Redhat have defined their own uh, post installation script. Here we got the message as completed and we, we need to click the reboot to reboot the machine. It will make the changes. Once it reboot, we can remove the media from the machine. It's booting up. Redhat Enterprise Linux Server 7.1. The drug code. The init ram effort, those are the init ram efforts built up drug out the cut okay. It's taking a little bit time. We got the login screen here, a command line login screen. Alright, I have never choose a GUI mode so only I'm getting a terminal I'm logging using my root and red hat at the rate one two three password our server have ready to play around it it's built and up and running okay my password is wrong so let me try once again all right I am in you can see the host name which I have defined. I have not defined a host name, so only it's a local host dot local domain. See the mount point what I have defined with the uh, volume group ex300. Uh, 
where root of term where log home where log audit and boot partition a boot partition will be day vsta1 other all will be under the ex3 tender volume group so i will explain you step by step how to set up a volume group and add a logical volume later here we can list the block devices clearly we can see sda1 is boot and sda2 is different with all other partitions and vgs volume group is ex300 which i have changed the name all right there is no free space in the volume group this is how i have built the red hat 7 machine it's similar to 6 version the installation only the partition layout choosing menu will be a little bit differ okay we can see later in other tutorial interesting tutorials this is my introduction like a introduction to linux and everyone want to know about the this installation if you are taking the course ex300 all right we can see later in other tutorial subscribe please thank you thank you for watching